Silicon Angle Media presents The Cube. Covering Alibaba Cloud's annual conference. Brought to you by Intel. Now here's John Furrier. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle Media, based in the United States in Silicon Valley in Palo Alto, California. I'm also co-host of theCUBE. Where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise, we are here in China. We are here with the Business Development Director of Americas for Alibaba Cloud International, Karen Liu. Thanks for taking the time. Sure, absolutely. Thank so you it's for exciting for us in, from the U.S. to come to China to hear the Alibaba Cloud story, but I'm blown away by the culture. It's not a B2B tech conference. It's not boring, it's mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. Talk about the Alibaba Cloud. What's so special about Alibaba Cloud? Sure, um, Alibaba Cloud is actually the incumbent cloud provider in China. And furthermore, actually we extend our reach into global market uh, since two years ago. And our strategy for globalized our cloud services is really to bridge up the business communities from overseas to China, from US to China, from US to Asia Pacific and uh, to connect to the rest of the world as well. So our goal is set up the, the platform to enable our enterprise customers, our SME, small and medium customer uh, base, be able to utilize our platform to develop their applications, their vertical solutions to benefit their end users. Alibaba Cloud has come such a long way since 2009. Mm -hmm. So much has happened. Alibaba Group as a company is not just e-commerce, it's, it's intersecting e-commerce, entertainment, and web services, mm -hmm. which is the magical formula that consumers want. They don't want a, just a business solution or just do e-commerce. You guys have weaved that formula together. What's special about that formula, and why is Alibaba important to the folks in the United States? I think it's all about the ecosystem and what makes the people, the people's community and business community benefit from the services we provided to the world, right? Not just the e-commerce platform we have been running for the past 18 years, but also uh, the entertaining, to the map services, location services, the data services like AliCloud Ali is providing and being able to put all those elements together and benefit people's lives and help to improve users experience from globally. It's been impressive, impressive here in China. Now as you go outside of China in the globalization plan, mm -hmm. what's the strategy? What's the tactics? What are you going to do? I think our value is to, as I mentioned earlier, bridge up the business communities, especially to enable the outside world benefit a huge market from mainland China and the rest of the world as well. So I think our key value is to enable the business communities and be able to help them reach out outside the world. And that, that being said, actually, one of our key uh, globalization strategy is to be able to help the SMEs, small and medium companies to benefit the new technologies to the level that they won't be able to get in the past with the old technologies. What's some of the um, statistics or facts um, fun facts or Alibaba stats in the U.S. and North America. Um, your presence there, can you share uh, what the current situation is? Sure, uh, I think things uh, about two years ago when we extend our reach into U.S. market, we now have uh, more than 2,000 customers from uh, individual to startup to medium enterprises and to some very large enterprises in the world as well. So people uh, from the communities uh, get to know Alibaba Cloud and get to know Alibaba not only provide the e-commerce services, uh, the EWTP platform to the world, we also provide the data technologies, we also provide the technologies to the world that benefit their reach to the world. Everyone talks about data driven. You guys have a very specific data formula, mm -hmm. data fueling, not just getting the data from engagement data and user data, but fueling that data in for user experience. So the question is, as you go outside of China into the US, certainly you have a developer ecosystem, you have a business ecosystem. Right. How do the folks benefit locally in the US? So business, 
do they have access to China? Is it the services? Is it the technology? Can you share the, the benefits to the developers and to the businesses? Sure, absolutely. We run a program called China Connect. And that's the program we help the business communities in the U.S. from uh, the ISVs, the mm -hmm. independent software vendors, from the SaaS providers and developers of communities to be able to develop their applications and software and bring those benefits to China market. And through this process, it's hard to navigate a brand new market, especially in China, without knowing the, the, the people, the communities, the culture, the business practices here, right? So we actually uh, provide a plat platform, a program, to help them to get to know the market and help, to help them to lend their business in China through this program and help them, of course, expertise their business growth in China. A lot of people want to know what's inside their cloud. It's one of those things where, you know, this mysterious cloud and security is a concern, but partnerships are critical. Talk about what's inside your cloud. Intel's a big partner. What's the Alibaba Intel partnership like? Oh, it's a fantastic partnership. Uh, we have been established over the past years and actually Intel is a one of our strategic alliance uh, in the marketplace. Uh, they provide us a lot of uh, from hardware to technology in terms of helping us to establish the, the platform with the business communities, not only in China, but globally. So we really appreciate Intel's partnership. And moving forward, we're looking for more reciprocal partnership with Intel to be able to form more strategic partnership to be able to benefit uh, the business communities and people's communities as well. For the folks in the U.S., I'll say that this is an amazing conference. It's got a million people here. I don't even know the numbers. I'm sure you have the numbers handy, but it's a mix of developers. You have a crowded house here mm -hmm. with developers, but you also have some business people. You have key partners. I saw some U.S. companies here. What's the vibe at the event? What's the, what's the feeling here? You got a music festival, three nights. Uh, it's not a boring tech conference. Yes. Is that by design? Share the stats. How many people are here? Yes. I guess this is a, the excitement of this uh, conference annually. Uh, we actually invite a lot of our customers from the U.S. and the rest of the world to join us to share the excitement from China, to share uh, the experience from Alibaba. Uh, just like Jack said, the vision for us is to make people's life more healthier and happier. The 2H strategy from us, right? So it's not just the hard working, it's also the fun, it's also the excitement for us to share this technology, to share this platform, and to enable people to enjoy this technology. And uh, the, uh, the, the scene I see here is mm -hmm. interesting. I've seen it Apple uh, in the late 90s when Steve Jobs transformed that company. He had the, the vision of technology meeting liberal arts. Mm -hmm. That became kind of their calling card. You guys have art and science coming together. It's not just scientists and developers. You have artists here because user experience is super important. Exactly. Th this is that part of the culture as science and arts comes together because you know Jack is a, a charismatic leader. Mm -hmm. He's a cult of personality. Mm -hmm. um, young company. It, it is. Share share the culture. It is. So uh, just uh, like Jack and other top executives has been. Uh, sharing with the community, we want to make sure technology is inclusive elements to everyone in the community, not just uh, for the programmers or developers or the very high tech companies, right? It should benefit the entire society. And fun, of course, always as part of it, to make people's life happier and to make users' experience more satisfied. You've had a career in international technology industry for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen how it's played out in the past. We're in a different world now. It's a global world. Uh, the internet has opened up a lot of good things and, mm -hmm. and sometimes not so bad good things. Um, uh, in the US, obviously, election and fake news. And, but as the culture starts connecting, a new kind of normal is evolving. How does Alibaba see themselves in this new world order? Uh, I think we see ourselves as an enabler and platform to bring the technology and bring the people and bring the happiness together to benefit everyone in the, in the world, not just the, the tech sectors or just the e-commerce sectors or just uh, one of the single verticals. We are trying to bring the technologies and uh, um, the enablement, the platform that everybody can enjoy. That's the core value for us as an inclusive, inclusive inclusive technology provider.
For the folks in the United States that will see this video, share something that they may not know about Alibaba. That might be the first time they're getting to see some of the culture and some mm -hmm. of the commentary. What should they know about Alibaba as they, as you guys move in and become global? They're going to see some services. Is it the services? Is it the people? It's culture. What should they engage with Alibaba how, Cloud? How should they see Alibaba Cloud? Uh, first of all, we are one of the top three cloud providers in the world. Uh, if you look at the latest the Gartner Magic Country uh, released a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that's why globalization is critical for us, and we want to be re to be able to reach out to the overseas communities, and we want to build up the trust and the confidence with the local business communities, like the region. Uh, we're in the U.S. market, for instance. So for us, uh, become the global family is critical for us, and this is our vision to bring the values to them as well. That's fantastic. It's a spectacular culture, and the ecosystem is just now growing. Open source software is growing exponentially. Yes. Global fabric uh, community is developing, mm -hmm. and there's opportunities for U.S. companies and developers to access China. Talk a little bit more about the potential that entrepreneurs and businesses could have in this global framework. Sure, uh, the beauty of uh, cloud is actually the ecosystem. It's not just the one company or one vertical. And for us, we, for instance, uh, we try to enable the, the small business, especially those startup business, by offering them the free resources from our infrastructure at global level, be able to enable those young people especially to create their own ideas, to be innovative and to utilize our resources, be able to access the technologies like the way the big companies has been invested into. So this is, I think, as an example for us to commit to this global market. I think for us, actually, to be part of uh, that family, especially in Silicon Valley, is critical because of the technologies, because of the innovations, and because of the mindset in Silicon Valley. So that's why we set up our R&D centers, we set up our front end back office in Silicon Valley as well, being able to be part of that region, and not only to learn the technologies, but sense the mindset in that region. I think it's critical for us as well, as a Chinese headquartered company, but with a global vision. And where in Silicon Valley is your office? Uh, we are uh, headquartered in uh, San Mateo, San California, Mateo. for U.S. operation. And entrepreneurship is changing. It is global. It's exciting. What's the benefit to entrepreneurs? And certainly, venture capitals are highly interested in the China market. Yes. They've been in here for a while. Mm -hmm. Is it coming together? Yes, it is, indeed. Actually, uh, not only are we funding a lot of uh, uh, the new tech companies, we also uh, been able to help them to find their partners to build up an extended ecosystem in Silicon Valley, in uh, West Coast regions, as, as well as uh, extend from uh, the inner U.S., in Midwest region, Chicago, for instance, uh, to New York, Boston areas as well. I noticed on the sponsorship list and partner list in your mm -hmm. ecosystem, a logo that is new but is super important in the U.S. is growing like crazy. The Cloud Native Compute Foundation is here, and that's the Linux Foundation. Mm -hmm. They're partnering with you. Mm -hmm. The Cloud Native developer market is evolving very, very quickly. They're different than the old classic right. IT developers. Right. A new generation, it's not IT anymore, it's data is driving it, and it's open source. Right. What, how do you guys um, engage with that community? Because clearly, they win with you. Yes, we're actually working with a lot of open source partners like uh, Docker, SAP, HANA One, and others uh, be able to help them to bring the communities, to bring their customers onto our infrastructures and create this kind of platform to help the developer communities develop their applications. So it's a lot of a vertical focus, the solution development paths right now. It's interesting you mentioned small you mentioned small medium sized enterprises and businesses mm -hmm. but the big enterprises are transforming as well. How do you see Alibaba helping them because they're going cloud native? They're going yes. private cloud on premise. Right. You have quantum computing, you yes. have mm -hmm. IoT, you have a lot of things. Mm -hmm. 
how's the digital transformation message for enterprises and for small businesses who don't want to pay the technology tax? Mm -hmm. I think for large enterprises, uh, the most uh, strategy we have been seeing from the marketplace, one is multi-cloud strategy. People need redundancy. People want to reduce the dependencies for one or two cloud providers. And uh, we work with uh, the other cloud providers in the community to provide interoperabilities for this, uh, to support this uh, multi-cloud strategies. On the other side, a couple of years back, people didn't know what's in the cloud, right? And then people rushed to cloud for everything. And now people come back and review the strategies and find out a hybrid cloud strategy is more suitable for large enterprises. They have their on-prem um, architect and infrastructure. Meanwhile, they move some of their applications to cloud. So it's a good combination of on-prem physical infrastructure, cloud, cloud topology. So we have been seeing the trends for both uh, for large enterprise clients. For small business, especially for small business, uh, they don't have the upfront huge investment into the infrastructure. And we provide them the instant access to the infrastructure, not only from computing, storage, network, and the database perspective, more, but more importantly, from security perspective. The Alibaba infrastructure services, I saw are part of the display here, very prominent in that equation. Mm -hmm. You guys have the scale. What can you share about the, under the hood, what's the, what, what's the technology look like? What's the engine of Alibaba Cloud? How mature is it? What's to do? What's the, where's the strategic direction? Obviously sure. blockchain is important, but now that's changing everything. So mm -hmm. there's all these new waves coming. Yes, uh, just like a Gartner Magic Foundry indicated uh, two months ago, if you look at the overall qualifications to be a world lead cloud provider, we're number four mm -hmm. after our AWS, Microsoft, Azure, and Google yeah. Cloud. But if you look at market share and revenue, we're number three. So that being said, we actually provide a very comprehensive technology and uh, the infrastructure to the business communities and people's communities. For instance, uh, from the global footprint perspective, right now we have 14 regions, pretty much cover all the major market in the world. And by end of this year into uh, beginning of next year, we're going to activate another two to three regions, make it 16 to 17 regions globally that we can offer the global cloud solutions for the big and small businesses. That's exciting, and Silicon Valley is certainly important, our, our home base. Are you guys hiring, is there expanding? Yes. Share a little bit of a public service announcement on what's going on in the, in the Silicon Valley area. You guys hiring, looking for engineers? What kind of people are you looking for? Yes, <laughs> great question actually. We are hiring, and we're looking for talented professionals join us from both marketing, uh, business development, to cloud architect, to technical account management, to marketing, for instance. Yeah. So we want to build up the business that we can truly build up the trust with the local business communities. That's why we hire a lot of uh, local talented mm -hmm. young professionals and help them to be able to fit into the culture, very unique culture of Alibaba, and also be able to contribute to this journey, very exciting journey. Uh, China has Valley. always been big. Everyone in the United States knows the numbers are big here in terms of mobile deployment, I mean, app size. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people in the US look at China and say, wow, if we can collaborate with China, it's a very nice distribution system, right. but they got to take care of their needs at home. Exactly. This is a big part of the undercurrent we're hearing. Mm -hmm. How do you guys help? Well, globalization, is always critical for any business, right? Even uh, for some small business, just like Jack Ma said this morning uh, at his speech, even for small business, they need to globalize. They need to reach out to more business communities and more customers. So uh, for us, actually, we, because of the huge market in China, because of the EWTP platform we set up globally, because of Alibaba Cloud infrastructure and our global footprint, we actually be able to help our customers not only access the infrastructure from a cloud perspective, but also help them to leverage our ecosystem from different business units and our partnership to be able to help them to expertise their business in China and globally.
That's exciting. And final, finally, developers are a big hot button. Everyone always says, I hear comments like, we have to own the developer community. Not that you can own the developer community, no one wants to be owned, but what they mean is they want to win over mm -hmm. the, the hearts and minds of developers. Yes. Um, a lot of competition. And developers want programmable infrastructure. Mm -hmm. we, in DevOps world, that's called DevOps. Yes. That is really the new normal in developer community. How do you guys uh, um, attack that developer market? We actually want to enable the developers community, not own or just win over. We want to constantly enable them with the new platform, the new business models, the new programs that we can bring them together. So that's our mission. Enablement. Congratulations on a spectacular formula. Thank and you. Thanks for having us here at theCUBE in SiliconANGLE and thanks for your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Karen Liu here in China with theCUBE exclusive coverage in China, bringing the stories of the most important trends in tech and Alibaba Cloud, really changing the game with their formula of e-commerce, entertainment and entertainment. This is not B2B, boring to boring, it's exciting. They have a music festival. Uh, 60,000 people are here at this conference, developers in the world watching. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. Thanks for watching.